Let's take a look at the process of solving a rational equation. A rational equation is an equation that has a variable in the denominator. In order to solve for that variable, we want to get it out of the denominator. And the, the way to do that is to multiply all the numerators by the least common denominator. This example is fairly straightforward because the denominator here, we have two denominators, but they're exactly the same. And so the least common denominator is in fact just that expression. So I want to multiply all the numerators by that expression, including any whole numbers that are part of my equation. So the minus 2 here at the end, I want to also multiply that by x minus 2. So we have 2 times x minus 2 over x minus 2 equals x times x minus 2 over x minus 2 and minus 2 times x minus 2. So the reason why we do that, the reason why step 1 is very helpful is because by multiplying by the least common denominator we're going to be able to cancel with the denominators that exist. So x minus 2, and I should point out the parentheses here are very important, x minus 2 in the numerator with those parentheses tells me that x minus 2 is a factor. It's multiplied by everything else up top, so I can cancel it, not individually, but the entire x minus 2 in the, in the denominator cancels with the x minus 2 up top. And over here, the same thing. x minus 2 and x minus 2, they cancel each other out. So we end up with a simpler, a much simpler equation. 2 equals x minus 2 times x minus 2. So now this is just a linear equation. I can solve uh, first multiplying negative 2 across the parentheses. We get 2 equals x minus 2 plus 4. And now I have some like terms here that I can combine. So we have 2 equals negative x plus 4. If we subtract 4 from both sides, I get negative 2 equals negative x. And then finally, dividing both sides by negative 1 or multiplying by negative 1 changes the negative x into a positive x, and we see x equals 2. But I should point out that this, what we found, I should really only consider this a possible solution until we check. So the question is whether this is a solution to the original equation. And this is really important to do for rational equations because it's possible that we might end up with a solution, but it might create zero in the denominator of the original expression. And in fact, that's exactly what happens. If we take x equal to 2, if we plug 2 in for x, we end up with the following. We get 2 over 2 minus 2 equals 2 over 2 minus 2 minus 2. So lots of 2s. But the sad thing, uh, unfortunate, I guess, I don't know, it's, not, it's not a terrible uh, thing, but it, it's a little bit sad. 2 minus 2 is 0, and so we have 2 over 0 equals 2 over 0 minus 2. But that expression, 2 over 0, dividing by 0 is undefined. We just can't really make mathematical sense of that. And so it turns out that x minus 2 is, in fact, not a solution at all. It's the only possible solution, but it's not a solution. It doesn't work as a solution. And so that tells me that there is no solution to the equation, and we can say that the equation is inconsistent. So we answered the question. We found a possible solution, but it turned out to actually not be one. And so the final answer and the end of our story is that there is no solution. So I encourage you to take a minute and try uh, the following problem. Solve the equation 8 over 3x minus 6 over 5x equals 11. As with the first example, we need to identify the least common denominator, and then I want to multiply each of the numerators by that, including any whole numbers. That should give us a simpler equation that we can uh, follow steps two and three uh, to try to solve. 
And once we get a solution, I want to check in a couple of ways. I want to check and make sure that the denominator is not zero, that none of the denominators uh, is equal to zero. And then we could also try to check the arithmetic and make sure that in fact both sides of the equation are equal to one another. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.